So today's a Sunday, which for us is tidy day. We empty the van out of everything, clean everything down. Anything that's found its way out of its home, we put back. We just really organize and get everything nice and tidy. Really helps to smooth out life and make it feel much more comfortable to live in a van full time. But whilst this is happening, I thought it's a great opportunity to finally do a van tour. So every time the van is on my story, I get asked to do a van tour, show more, I get asked questions about it, but there's always something that's stopping me from doing a full tour video. It's mainly because there's always something I'm improving. The van is a project where I'm constantly tweaking, changing and improving different aspects of it. And it never feels that I've come to a nice time to do a van tour where there isn't anything I wanna change or need to be changing. There's nothing that's currently being done. So I figured, Let's just get it out of the way, get it done. This is the 2021 van tour as it currently is. There's still some stuff that I'm altering at the moment. There's gonna be loads that change in the future, but this is as we are right now. So let's start with the exterior and I'll do a walk around, show some of the features and stuff like that we've got on the outside. The van itself is a Citroen Relay L3 H2. So it's the second biggest one you can get. It's a nice wide vehicle, which if you're short like me and Sarah means you can lie across. It has loads of extra room in the length. The outside is relatively stock, I would guess. I've resprayed the bonnet as an attempt of just seeing what it looks like, because I'd quite like to paint the entire van black. So I did that as a bit of a trial run to come out okay. So at some point in the future, I might be giving the whole van a matte black paint job. Recently blacked my bumpers, so they're nice and black. Spray painted the, the wheels black as well, just so they're looking a bit nice. We've got some wind deflectors on the side. On this side here, we have got the awning, which we don't use too much. Sometimes if it's raining, we want to do a workout or if we are stopping up camp for a long period of time, we might put that out, but it's pretty rare that gets used. Around the other side, it's quite plain really. A small window just here. So this is what we're doing at the moment. Halfway through our tidy, I've left everything out so we can see in the back of it better later on. On the back, we've got some reversing cameras and if I try and climb up on top, up here, you will see that there is a couple of skylights and a solar panel, which gives us a nice little base level of charge from that. So that's the outside, relatively boring to be showing you the outside of a van. I know that's not what you want to be seeing, but we do need to start somewhere. On this side here, there is an external plug socket and there's also where we fill the water up. We've got water tanks underneath, which does make the clearance a little low. Sometimes we do scrape those, which is not ideal, but can't be perfect in every single way. At the moment, it's actually jacked up on our little levelers which we use to balance out the van on uneven ground. Down here, you can see some of the taps of the water pipe and the exhaust from the engine and the, the diesel heater. So that's the exterior of the van. Let's open the door, get inside and show you everything in there. Hello. Hello. So inside of the van, starting up at the cab first, we've got Sarah's seat and my seat. You can tell which one's my seat. You've got your collection of pine cones and rocks and stuff. Well, that's part of your collection as well. It's true. Uh, in the front here, not much real change. I've super glued a cable all the way around. So I've always got a cable in the front. Down the door compartment here, we've got our blackout blinds, which have got all magnetic little discs on so they can just quickly be attached up onto the windows. We've got those for both the side windows and the front window here with just these magnetic little discs that we clip those up, makes the van completely black in here. Up above the cab, we've got this little area here where we keep gloves, hats, sunglasses, anything we need to handily get to. And then up above that again, we've got an area up here where we keep our warm jackets, anything we need to get to quickly. We've got a bit of a games cupboard in here, with some board games in, some cards, but this is our nice little quick go-to area. This is another curtain that we sometimes pull down across the front here if we just want an extra little bit of privacy, but those blackout curtains do do a really good job of making it feel like a completely closed off space in here. One of the things I'd always really, really recommend to anyone doing a van is to get captain chairs in. So these guys spin around. The thing about that 
is that it opens up so much more room in the van because now we've added on all the extra space that's usable when we are parked up. Both of these turn around, which means we get a really nice open work area, really nice and light out here, especially with sliding door wide open. So our table and work area was something that we really wanted to try and prioritize when doing the van. And part of that was wanting something that's very, very sturdy, it's stable, there's no wobble in it, no rocking, and it's there permanently. So it can't be folded away, it's just always here. Between the things that I really wanted to make sure worked well and were just permanently fixed in the van, a table and a bed were the two main priorities. I didn't want to be packing away my work to be able to go to sleep, vice versa. So it's nice that one of us can be working and the other one wants to go to bed, get an early night, that's cool. Or wake up in the morning, you want to crack straight on with it, all your stuff can still just be left out and ready to go. These tabletop is a nice solid wood. It matches all the kitchen out here too, really nice. And then we've got these two chairs you can really comfortably work at for the table. Underneath the table, we've got this shelf at the back here, which we keep hard drives in and stuff like that. Really nice to have somewhere you can put stuff that's still really accessible, but isn't on the table the whole time. And we've got four plug sockets that are great for plugging in laptops or hard drives, just to have good access to power there. Should mention that underneath these seats is where all the power really happens. There is two 120 amp hour leisure batteries underneath here, which charge from the alternate when the engine is running, as well as getting a bit of a trickle feed from the solar panel as well, if it's ever sunny in Scotland. They connect into a fuse board that is at the top here, which runs on 12 volt power supplies. And then there's another cable that runs through underneath my chair, which has got the inverter, which then powers all of our plug sockets and 240 volts. Next to our table just here, we've got a couple of USBs. We've got another window we can open, close with a little midge net on it. And then right above our work area, we've got our electronics cupboard. In here, we keep all our chargers and batteries ready to go. You come back from a shoot, you can just put your battery straight on charge. There's spaces for our laptops to go, all our extra cables, hard drives. There's also some more plug sockets in here so we can charge extra batteries, drones, things like that. Everything in here is just all our gear and electronic stuff, nice and easy to hand. Up in here, we've got our Wi-Fi box, which lives just around the corner here. And that's connected to some aerials on the outside of the van which means that we have pretty good 4G coverage wherever we are in Scotland, really. And it's nice having that set up so that we're able to just turn our laptops on and they just work on the Wi-Fi. Spinning around the other side, we've got all our switches and everything like that. So we've got all our lighting up here for the main lights along the top of the van. We've got lighting underneath the sides too. And there's also an exterior light that runs all the way along the outside underneath the awning which is nice for night time if you're trying to make a nice little social area outside. We've got a few little readouts for temperature and the power that's currently coming out of the batteries. And then next to that, we've got a little sound system, just radio. We don't really play the radio on this, we just connect up to Bluetooth and just play our own music. But that's really nice to have, always good to be playing the tunes. Before moving into the middle area of the van, which I guess is, I guess there is sort of like a front, middle and back. Uh, I'll quickly show you down here. So we've got this raised platform here to help with your feet when you're sat on these chairs. But underneath here, we keep all our shoes or some of our shoes. Muddy boots live in the back. These are our slippers and go-to day-to-day shoes. One of the skylights, these open up. You can either go blackout or they've got a midge net one side. And then on our sliding door, just like that in the front, we've got these little magnets so that this blackout curtain can come down. And with that, we can basically make the van completely black inside. So it's really dark in here, even if it's sunny outside, but also anyone who's driving by can't tell that we're in here, even with all the lights on, which is really nice. Helps us feel a bit more private and a bit more secure. Just right here, right by the door, we've got a little towel rail to see if we have gonna dry any clothes, any towels or anything they can be out there just to be getting a little bit more air because that's always the issue in the van is drying stuff out. The chair Sarah sat on has got some seat belts on too so we are able to take an extra couple of passengers with us if we want or sometimes you actually sit and work here whilst we're driving don't you? Okay. Just, just, like, deadline. Yeah it's just quite handy to have the option of being able to drive and work as well. 
Underneath this bench here, there's a bit of a dead space at the moment. Um, the diesel heater lives in there at the moment, which pumps warm air out backwards towards the bed area. And we also keep a load of big water bottles of water, just because when the mains water runs out from our tanks, we have got some spare to dive into until we can fill that up again. Moving backwards into the middle area or kitchen, turn our lights on. So to one side, we've got mason jars filled with stuff we need to go to, cocoa pops, some muesli, some flour, some tea bags, decaf. We've got the spice rack underneath, chili flakes on the end that Sarah can reach from where she sat just there. That was requested. And we've got wooden countertop and this sits above, just an Ikea unit actually that works well because it fits in all these nice little dividers which work really well for organising all our food and stuff. The top drawer we tend to keep with more fresh stuff and snacks. Next up is the next sort of tier down of things that we use. So lots of sauces and coffee and tea bags and things. And then below that is the heavy one with sort of pasta, sauces, cans, tins, stuff like that in there. But these dividers are really helpful for just helping to organize all this. And these are just literally from Ikea. I've just covered them in a black plastic. Here's the diesel heater I mentioned, so that pumps out warm air towards us. And then just here we've got our bin, which we can pull out and use that as and when. So the other side is our kitchen sink area. On the top we just got two hobs, one slightly bigger than the other. And then to the left, a sink, which just runs cold water. We don't have a heater in here. Figured that a hot water heater takes a bit too much room. After a year of being in here, haven't really missed not having hot water. We just boil it if we ever need it. Underneath this, we've got sort of a cleaning kitchen utility area to the left where all our cleaning supplies and stuff. To the right is sort of cutlery, coffee press, stuff like that, nice and easy to get to. We've also got fire extinguisher, carbon monoxide, meter super important this one here is sort of pot pans any extras some extra food that won't fit in elsewhere and then our fridge just to the left the fridge is actually a little bit clever so this runs off of the ignition so i found that before it was taking too much of our battery supply to have it on whereas what i've done now is connect this up so this chills when the engine's on so it's not using our main battery supply but we find that that keeps quite a nice comfortable level of temperature in there most of the time up above there is three little plant pots that currently are empty but we're trying to think of what can go into those <laughs> the, the winter killed the old plant so we're trying to think of something that can go in there it's not the cactus because i don't really want anything too spiky little coffee tea station to the left here next to the kettle our mugs hang up here when we're driving which are quite carefully arranged so they don't clash and hit each other and then these other cupboards up here are all just our clothes cupboards really so sarah's got two one in the front here she's got one in the back as well i've got two of these as well so just keep our clothes in there this one's for all our toiletries and then the very last thing to show in here is our heater control, which lives just here. So we can reach that from both inside the bed or out, and that just helps to turn our diesel heater on off and on, which pumps warm air out into the van. It's quite expensive to install, it costs quite a bit of money, but it completely transforms how comfortable you can be in here. In about 10 minutes, you can get it up to a nice or 20 degrees, and then it will just maintain that, which is really, really nice, especially in the cold winters. So our bed area is separated by this curtain and inside here it's pretty much just a full bed space. As I said we've got these two extra cupboards for our own clothes, me and Sarah have one of those each. There's these little hanging baskets we use just to shove in anything extra that we're not too sure where else can go. The thing with the van is everything needs a space so anything we've got in here has a place it lives and it needs to return there. So if you're looking for anything in particular if you mention it i know exactly where it lives in this van but there's always these extra little things like books or pens or notepads that you're not quite sure where they should live so that's what these little things are used for keeping our books or a charge or battery pack something that doesn't really have a place lives in there got another one of these over here and we've also got another set of plug sockets and usbs up here so that we can work in bed and charge stuff in bed if we want to really nice if you're having a lazy day want to work in bed 
in here there's another skylight again this blacks out and our little window this side also blacks out so this area up here gets really dark and really cozy actually with all the blackout it's really really cozy in the van it's really nice you should show an example insert clip here we are in our blackout setup turn some of the lights on so with this now we've got all our curtains up over the windows it's very very dark in here it's really nice for waking up sleeping no one knows you're in here at all now and so when we are working in the afternoon and in the evenings you can remove all the glare from your screen uh, it's just really really good for being able to keep everything nice and dark in here but back to daytime again when it is really dark in here we have got a little light we can turn off and on from inside the bed area so we don't have to get up all the time the very final thing to show in here is our ipad tv mount which holds the ipad directly in front of us so if we are watching any tv in bed at all we can have that quite comfortably set up and that just tucks away in this corner being held up by a doorknob that i painted black everything in this van has sort of come about through me trying to wrap my head around how best to do stuff and fix stuff and there's always stuff that is being improved and changed breaking fixing so there's not really a set way of doing things i've just sort of lived in it and made change and altered it as we've gone along seeing what i can find and do to make stuff easier really and there's always stuff that's changing and being improved right now there's a huge list of things i want to change and make better but it all just takes time underneath the bed is all our gear storage that's usually quite a messy space we've got a little catch here so we can access it from this side but I'll go around to the back door and show it from there. It's probably a little bit easier to do. Here is our rear garage area. This is our sort of like ready to go access, get everything, you know, we're leaving the van type area. So on the back of this door, we've got a load of sort of go-to bags, um, sort of bag storage, various different types. Same on the other side, we keep bags, jackets up here. And then the hallway along the back here, we've got hooks so we can just hang even more jackets, bags, all sorts of stuff up there. And usually this is covered with some of the bags we've got down here, but I've sort of laid everything out just so we can get in and show the van a bit more detail. To the right is our shoe storage area. We've got two shelves and it's completely rubber lined just to try and help some of the moisture and dirt not get too bad and get everywhere. But this is where all our extra shoes are kept. We've probably got too many of those. They all have a different purpose and can't really get rid of can't really get rid of them. To the other side of this area is sort of tools, jump leads, snow chains, oil, various different tools and parts for the van are kept down in there. This is waterproof trousers and sort of dry robe and stuff at the moment. And then below that, this is our gas tank, and that's where the big canister of propane lives which fuels our hob, not the heater, the heater's diesel, and that runs off the main fuel tank. But that's so our propane is just for our cooker. Moving inside here, we've got a little light switch that lights up this area. I spent a bit of time last summer putting all these shelves so there can be some organization in here, but there isn't enough. And it's usually an absolute bomb site because essentially all of that gear there has to fit into this space but I'll talk through a little bit as we can. Starting at the back end, there's some space here for a snow shovel. Down here is just a cupboard here. It's got our wetsuits in there at the moment in that dry bag. And then up the top is sleeping bags, various different kinds shoved in there. We've got some workout gear, some weights. In the top right here is sort of like a workshoppy area. So big box full of tools, drills, screws, basically my full toolkit so that if anything breaks whilst we're away I can try my best to repair it. To the right of that there's some storage for like our hose system, the water pump's also kept down at the bottom there, there's our portable shower, a few extra supplies, below this there's some glass bowls and extra sort of food storage and stuff like that. Switching around to the other side, the top one here which is 
filled up with camping supplies, so all our camp food, our stoves, any sort of camping accessories we might need in there. There's some extra water bottles in there as well as all our towels and things like that. The bottom here is a bit of an odd area. In there there's some tripods and some fins and some masks if we ever want to go play in the sea. I set up these bungee cords over all this area just to try and help keep a lot of that stuff in so it's not going to fall out too much when we're driving around which do work to some degree. This top one up here is our climbing area so the box back there is full of all our crampons, our sort of climbing rack, various different things for climbing, we've got our climbing helmets and then next to that is our ice axes and I've got a little normal wood axe as well. This bottom one has got a rope bag filled with three different length ropes just so we've got a nice variety in there and then below that is the tents so that's sort of everything we need shoved into one very small space and the top there's also these elastic cords which we sometimes hang other stuff from like those wedges that are keeping the van level at the moment and then if i step out of here i can then talk through some of the stuff we've got on the floor so we've got a little skateboard, doesn't really get used too much, but sometimes nice if we're going to the shop. Yoga mats, some extra bag of clothes that we're not really using at the moment. That's a big down jacket, which again is just in storage because it's the summer now. These are just our, all our camera bags, just various different bags. These aren't all full, but they're just for different uses and different purposes. And down at this end, we've got again, just some big bags that we just have just in case we need to go away. And all of this does stack up and fit in the back there quite nicely, but still pretty busy in there most of the time. So that's a very quick tour of the van. I tried to be as quick and concise as possible because I could talk for hours and hours on everything that's in the van. One thing I've tried to do is just live in it and make those changes as I've seen fit. I think if you were to sit down and write out everything you thought you needed in the van, you'd probably add in loads of stuff you didn't and not realize loads of stuff you did. So I think the best way for me to work on it is to live in it and make improvements as I go. So that's really how everything's come about. There's probably loads of stuff I've missed as well. Lots of little hooks and little things for helping to keep stuff secure. And as I said at the start, there is always something else you want to change. It's really a never-ending project of constant improvement and progression. So the next thing you want to be doing is, first of all, putting on a roof rack so we can get some of the extra storage of stuff here up on the roof and out of the way. And then we also want to change this entire seating area into a much more comfortable bench situation increase the amount of storage underneath and hopefully have it fold out so we can accommodate even more people sitting here if we wanted to for on a bigger trip yeah we're also wanting to replace the floor get rid of the carpet change that out for wood or lino because carpet is just a nightmare in a van it's okay if you're very very clean but at the moment we're in a pine forest so it's taken me ages this morning to try and sweep out all the pine needles and I've not done a very good job of it. And then if we're anywhere near the beach, sand gets everywhere. So that needs to be changed to wood or lino, something that just is much easier to sweep out. Maybe get a little rug or something. So that is the van tour 2021. By the time this is live, there's probably going to be a hundred different ideas about things I want to change, which is never ending. But I hope you enjoyed this little insight into our life on the road, how we live and how we have made this van work for us. What I'm going to do now is load all this stuff back into the van. And then I'm going to do a little litter pick around where we're staying. So one thing I always try to do wherever we stay is in the morning before we leave, just walk around, pick up any litter or trash you can find, just so wherever we are, we leave it in a better place than it was when we arrived. So I'm gonna crack on, get that done, and then probably spend the rest of the day working in this lovely pine forest. Cheers.